that off, by the way. Oh, God. Oh, it was on yourself. <laughs> Hey guys and welcome to a new video. In this video we're going to cover why the SGB aka the Sarin Gold Bow is the most versatile T92 weapon out there. So when you're ready grab your cup of tea, sit back, relax and enjoy. Many people have told me that the Sarin Gold Bow is a bad weapon, however after some personal testing I will have to disagree. The Sarin Gold Bow is currently 755 million GP, which is relatively cheap for a T92 weapon. The ECB or Eldrix Crossbow is almost double the price at over 1.4 billion GP. The main argument for the SGB being bad is of course that it cannot use the criminal bolts or the needle strike ability, both of which I cover in my dual wield versus two handed weapon video, talking about how ascensions are better than a noxious longbow. Apart from range, of course. Now, the SGB or ECB or even Blightbound crossbows are the best in slot weapons against magic class enemies. That would be the Hex Hunter bow. Think Magister, Calfight King and Mage Phase, Araxi, and even Yakamaru. And the Hex Hunter bow is only 255 mil. So how is the SGB versatile? Well, its spec is very, very good. And yes, you can argue that this is a spec weapon, and it definitely is if you're going to be using melee or magic, but you can also camp this weapon, and it isn't a bad idea either. I'll explain why in just a bit. Also, for those wondering, the Eldrix crossbow can use the criminal bolts, but it cannot use the needle strike ability, because that is a dual-wield ranged ability. So before we get into why I like the SGB and why it's the most versatile 292 out there, I'm going to cover how it works. And don't worry, I will mention examples of the ECB in this video as well and where it works and so on. The single thing that makes the Saren Gold Bow outstanding and very versatile for PVM is the special attack called Crystal Rain, requiring 30% adrenaline. The SGB special attack launches arrows in the air and the more of these arrows that land on the target the more damage you will be dealing with the special attack. The amount of arrows that land and hit will entirely depend on the size of the enemy or opponent you are attacking. If the opponent is 3x3 three three or larger you have a chance to hit all 5 arrows. The larger the enemy is the higher the chance will be. And if the target is stationary and a 5x5 five five blocked target, all 5 arrows will have a 100% chance of hitting and dealing damage, which is where this bow shines. Before I get into the fun stuff, I want to give a massive shout out to Jasus, who borrowed me both an Eldritch crossbow and a Saron God bow to test out in PVM. Without Jasus, I wouldn't have been able to make this video because I simply don't have 2 billion GP lying around. But don't worry, because he does. Okay, now I obviously like Elite Dungeons, so where would I go to start off this testing video? Elite Dungeon 2. And oh boy, is the Saren Gold Bow good for Elite Dungeon 2. Especially for all the bosses because they are all 5x5. Five five. At a Stellan, I quickly realized that the Saren Gold Bow was going to be a lot of fun to play around with. Just look at these hits. Even outside of the White Wormhole and not using Death Swiftness, at the start of the kill, a SGB spec still hits super, super hard. It hits like a truck. This, <laughs> I love these hits. Now I'm sure people are going to type away and mention don't camp an SGB because you're missing out on damage because you aren't using the criminal bolts. And yes, that is true. But for testing, I simply stuck to the SGB for the most part. So what should you take away from this? If you're going to buy this weapon, if you want maximum damage, you're going to stick to your dual wield weapons with Needle Strike and Criminal Bolts, and then simply use the SGB as a spec weapon. But, as I'll show you in this video, it's also a very nice weapon to simply camp if you don't like switching weapons too much. Next up is the second boss, Veraclyph, aka KBD's brother, and again, the SGB did amazing. Even on the Spires, it did pretty well. Though, I wouldn't recommend using your SGB spec on the Spires, as it's a waste of damage on the boss. Now, during these tests, or runs, I did actually beat my melee PB. Now, I'm not gonna say it's very good at all, in fact, it's pretty trash compared to some people in my clan, but I ended up getting a 4 minute 15 second kill with ranged, and that was while messing up a lot of things, having issues with the Spire hitbox. So just by camping an SGB, no Reckless Aura, no Vaughn Bombs, no Ripper Demon, I was able to get or beat my PB. And no, the PB isn't good, and if I went back a couple of runs, I should definitely be able to beat that PB, 
possibly even with melee, because melee is just broken. But that just goes to show that this weapon is very, very good here. I know I'm making excuses, but I don't solo lead dungeon too often. And in the hands of a scrub, aka me, I beat my PB with ranged here. And I, I pretty much never use ranged. So that just goes to show that the SGB is effective at Elite Dungeon 2. As for the ECB, which is double the price, the spec is very, very good at the trash mobs because it just shreds through them. Although you might miss out a little bit on the healing, the ECB spec with Soul Split dealing extra damage is incredibly good on high HP trash mobs like the dragons in Elite Dungeon 2. Though for the other mobs, you of course want to chin away using your mechanized chin chompers. Moving up to Elite Dungeon 3, I do not recommend using a Seren Gold Bow at all here. However, for the first boss, the Crassian Leviathan, the Eldex Crossbow spec is rather effective because you're using Soul Split the entire fight anyways. Sure, you miss out on some healing, but it just... It just rips through the Crassian Leviathan. This is a viable weapon at Elite Dungeon 3 for the first boss. And if you're chinning the first part anyways, you know, the trash mobs, you might as well use it. And we ended up getting a time of 1 minute and 19 seconds in duo, which I think isn't bad, you know, for camping an ECB. Not bad. Now as for the Ambassador, the third boss or final boss, he is a 3x3 boss, meaning the SGB spec can hit pretty hard, but there's a chance of a lot of the arrows missing and you missing out on damage. The Eldex Crossbow spec or ECB spec on the spinners, however, is very, very effective and I can see it becoming a lot easier, especially if you have multiple people with the spec in your group. It just works super, super well. Next up was Elite Dungeon 1, and this time we decided to go with melee. And I know this is a trio, but we are all using an SGB as a switch. Now, using a different combat style, let's say magic or melee, if you use the SGB, there's a chance of you splashing unless you use the ingenuity of the human's ability, which gives you 100% accuracy for the next 6 seconds. Now it does work well here because the Sanctum Guardian is a 9x9 boss, however you can't really properly see the hits, but we ended up killing the boss in 24 seconds using melee and the SGB switch. Now while the SGB is absolute trash at Masuta because he is a 1x1 boss, Seru is a 4x4 boss. So the SGB does work here, it isn't the best, but it does work. And because you're taking a lot of damage, you don't really want to switch to Soul Split here using an ECB, until you get on its back to kill the crystals or break the crystals. That's where the ECB comes in handy and is much, much better than the SGB. So for Elite Dungeon 1, it's kind of difficult, but I would definitely say the SGB is way more worth your money here using an Ingenuity of the Humans and a melee setup, because you can use the spec where it works, and you can use melee for prog damage. The ECB is just too niche here to buy for just this boss. For those that are unaware, the spec from the Eldex Crossbow called Split Soul makes you deal damage equivalent to four times what you would have healed with Soul Split, assuming you have Soul Split turned on. That's a lot of extra damage. Just saying. Next up, I decided to go to the Fight Kiln to try out the ECB on the mobs and the SGB on the Jads and Harakon. And oh boy, is the ECB good here. The only problem is that you don't heal using Soul Split while you use the spec, but you just rip through these mobs like it's nothing. The Fight Kiln is an absolute joke using an ECB. You just demolish everything in your path using the ECB spec, apart from the deals, of course. Now, as for the Jads, they are 5x5, five five, just like the final boss of the fight kiln, so the SGB will be dealing a lot of damage. What I did notice is that when the target was moving or the target was obstructed, the SGB just wouldn't hit with a lot of arrows. So, what you want to do is stand in the middle, make the Jad attack you, make sure he's not moving, and then use your SGB spec. The SGB spec also works very well on some of the larger monsters inside the fight kiln, or fight caves by the way. And then to top it off, it was time to use the SGB spec on that shrimpy boy. And it was good, really, really good. The hits just made the final boss an absolute joke. If you're running low on food or you're struggling with the fight kiln and you happen to have 755 mil laying around, you can make your fight kill on life easier by just using an SGB. It is so good. The ECB spec is also quite good because you can just soul split on Harakon and do extra damage using that ECB. So they're both good weapons and if you have the money for both and you're going for the final boss, you can get those 100 kills a lot quicker using these two weapons. 
Now before I get to Rage, Tree of Arago, and of course, Araxor, I'm going to show you guys a bunch of bosses this thing works at in terms of just using the spec. King Black Dragon? No problem. Calfight King? No problem. Could be useful for solos. Calfight Queen? No problem. Excelled Calfight Queen? No problem. At Hellweird also works very well because Hellweird is 5x5. Five five. Now I didn't cover it very extensively here because I just don't like Hellweird. As for Vindicta, I do enjoy Vindicta. Now Vindicta is actually 3x3 three three until he hops on his dragon. He then turns into a 5x5 five five boss. And really, camping the SGB was quite fun at Vindicta, just because the spec hits so freaking hard. That's outside of Reckless and Death Swiftness, by the way. Just using the spec whenever he flies off, or whenever you can, is just super effective at Vindicta. Now, the ECB would probably also be fairly decent here, but you'd be using food if you're using the spec because you wouldn't get the healing. But just camping the SGB at Vindicta, getting a little over 1 minute kills, was very, very chill and... Honestly, I like Ranged Vindicta now. Camping the SGB using the spec here and there was just fantastic. It was so chill, so easy, almost no effort using Soul Split, really. As for Queen Black Dragon, this spec can just destroy one entire phase if you're lucky, and it makes Queen Black Dragon even easier than it was before. There's not much to say about it, it just works so well at Queen Black Dragon, it's ridiculous. As for Telos, it does work on him. He is a 5x5 five five boss. However, using Mage Armor, using it as a switch, it didn't deal that much damage in my personal testing. Though I'm sure you could range Telos with this weapon quite well. On P5, aka the final phase, after 100% rage or up, Telos is actually 10x10, 10 10, so the SGB can hit even harder. And I'm pretty sure it's a strategy of high enrages to use the SGB spec to finish off Telos. Though, please don't quote me on that. Thanks. I also did some Trio Virago with Cuddly Zebra and Zapy Zapy, and I ended up trying out the SGB there as well. The spec does especially good on Phase 3 and 5, and it was a lot of fun to try it out at Virago. In fact, this was my first time doing Trio Virago. I was definitely getting carried, but it didn't matter, I had a lot of fun, made a good amount of money, and was able to test the SGB quite well. It does best in P5 because Virago is actually blocked, so all the arrows do hit. Also, I did learn that you don't want to use the SGB spec right after the reflect, unless you want to PK your teammates or yourself. The Saren God Bow is also effective at Beastmaster Durzag and Yakamaru, so both raid bosses. There is however one problem with the SGB at raids. You'll have to do Beastmaster Durzag slightly differently if you want to maximize your damage using the spec, even if 9 people in the raid are using an SGB. The problem with Beastmaster Durzag is that the arrows from your spec can land on the other side of the arena. They are blocked by the arena, so not all of the arrows will hit Beastmaster Durzag unless he's standing in the middle or somewhere else. This means that the damage will be much lower if Beastmaster Durzag is in the corner, which is where Beastmaster Durzag will be located in the majority of raids. Yakamaru, however, is 5x5 five five blocked, meaning all arrows will always hit, and it works on every single pull, so it is absolutely perfect for Yakamaru. This weapon wrecks on the pulls. Just look at those hits right there of me and my teammates using the SGB spec. The damage output of the Sarangol bow at Yakamaru every 30 seconds for 30% adrenaline is just beyond belief. So if you already own Ascensions, you like raids, you like ranged, this might be a weapon worth looking into as a spec weapon. As for Araxor, you don't want to use an ECB here ever unless you're able to properly pray your flick using Soul Split. I was camping the SGB in these clips and I got consistent 4 minute or faster kills, which is fairly decent in my opinion, at least for me personally. I'm not insanely good at racks, I just do it casually. I was doing it casually in the clips. Now again, obviously, if you want to do more damage, you'd use Ascensions plus Ruby Uber Criminal Bolts here and then just switch to the SGB for the spec. In the clips, I was camping the SGB because I like doing casual racks and the extra range compared to the Ascensions using a Seren Gold Bow is quite nice if you're doing racks casually as a daily, basically. Now, the Seren God Bow can make the final phase of Rax an absolute joke. You can pretty much skip the entire Black Blob thing, which is the hardest part of the Araxor fight, by simply specking using your Seren God Bow. 
Ideally, you'd want to spec just before your death swiftness runs out or just before your adrenaline gets stolen by Araxor before 30,000 life points. This way, you can pretty much guarantee the kill every single time you spec. If you like Araxor and you like range, the SGB is definitely the weapon for you, either in spec format or weapon you camp, or something you add to your Essence of Finality amulet, if you have a lot of money. Something to note with the SGB at Araxor is when you get webbed up and you just spec using your SGB, your SGB actually gets cancelled out, or at least the other four arrows get cancelled out. Also, if you end up specking and a Raxor webs or spawns a mirrorback spider in the minion path, you're definitely going to be dead meat at higher enrages. As for next, there's absolutely zero reason for you to use a Saren Gold Bow over something like Ascensions or an Eldex Crossbow, which is, by the way, especially good at next. This is where the Eldex Crossbow comes in handy, because the spec gives you, apparently according to some high level PVMers, almost a 40% damage increase. And that is a lot. It's especially good when you rapid fire on the minion to get the minion down quickly, but it's also good for the damage capped phases. At least I found that from personal testing. I did both solos and duos, and my solos were definitely faster using the Eldex crossbow. I do have to note that in the final phase, if you don't pray magic or you mess up your prey flick and you're using the spec, and you do end up getting hit by next, you're going to take a huge amount of damage, so possibly for the Zara's phase you don't want to use the spec because it's slightly dangerous and it can get you killed. Regarding Solak, you're much better off using an Eldex Crossbow over a Saren Godbow. The reason for this is simply because of the spec. It works in many parts of the fight. One of them is the roots. Assuming the base tank knows what he's doing and he's pulling Solak to the south and you have one of the northern roots as your root, you would be able to use your Eldex Crossbow spec and deal massive damage against the root. It also works very well against his arms and legs once he puts them down. Assuming you death swiftness, what you can also do is death swiftness just before the core spawns, aka before the legs are dead. Then you use the spec and then you use a limitless to get off some thresholds on the core, assuming you have a limitless. That being said, if your adrenaline pot is off cooldown, what you want to do is use your planted feet switch, death swiftness before the legs are dead, build up on the legs, and then you can use thresholds as soon as that core spawns. In phase 3, when you're charging up the pads, when Solak starts shaking or torquing or whatever you want to call it, you can also use the spec and do extra damage with the ECB. Or, alternatively, if you're watching this video and you don't have an ECB, this is a good place to save food when you're doing Solak. And of course, for the final part of the fight, DPSing down Solak is very important, otherwise you get instant killed. The ECB, again, works very well for this part of the fight. Extra damage is always good. The Eldex Crossbow is much, much better at Legios than the Saren God though as well, because the spec, again, reigns supreme. With that being said, that is most of the bosses I tested and wanted to test for this video. Now the big question is, is a Saren Godbow worth it or is the Eldex Crossbow worth it? In my opinion, I think both of these weapons are worth the price, but the Eldex Crossbow is way too expensive for what it's worth if you don't do bosses like Nex, Nex AOD, Legios, or possibly Solak with ranged very often. If you don't, you're better off sticking to your Blightbounds, Ascensions, or Saren Godbow. The Saren Godbow is half the price and more versatile than the Eldex Crossbow, assuming you're going to be using it with all combat styles and at all the bosses it works on. In fact, this is probably the most fun weapon in the game to use. However, I wouldn't get this weapon if you don't have Ascensions and T99 Prayers for ranged, assuming you're focusing on the ranged combat style. If you're someone that focuses on, let's say, the melee combat style, you have your T99 Prayers, you have your Mutated Bard, your ZGS and so on, this could be a nice addition to your weaponry, assuming you also have the Ingenuity of the Humans for 100% accuracy, which is also relatively expensive. What I'm trying to say is, if you've maxed out your melee and you have 700 155 mil laying around, this is something that could change your playstyle and make it a lot more fun when you're PVMing at the bosses it works on well. Something I haven't covered in this video is putting the Saren Godbow spec, which admittedly is very expensive, in the new Essence of Finality amulet. This means you don't even have to switch to the weapon to use the spec, you simply use the amulet instead. Here's a cool clip from Goat RS using the criminal bolts, the SGB spec in his amulet, and an Eldex crossbow for his main hand weapon. 
If the Bacriminal bolts proc, you're going to have some thick 15k hits. You can also use the SGB with Chinchompas if you put it inside your Essence of Finality, as shown here by Eva Lucario. This will probably have some niche uses for high level PVM. So to wrap it up, here are some pros and cons of these two weapons. It entirely depends on what you have in game and what your needs are, what bosses you do. In my opinion, I think the Saturn God Bow is way more bang for your buck, it's more versatile, and it's a lot of fun. While the Eldex Crossbow was a good weapon, I didn't find it very enjoyable and the price tag is way too steep. However, if you do do a lot of necks, that is definitely the weapon you'd want to have. With that being said, I hope you guys enjoyed this video and found it interesting. If you did, leave a like down below and maybe even consider subscribing. And I'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace.